I know Thanksgiving's been over for a couple months now, but uh, before we hustle into the most wonderful time of the year, I want to just hit the pause button just a bit longer and raise up this notion of giving thanks because I just love everything about Thanksgiving. I love the food. I love the friends and the family and the fellowship around the table. I love the conversation. It's one of the few holidays that I get to open up the good wine. Okay. I love the day after Thanksgiving, all the leftovers. I love the day after the day after and all the leftovers. I love everything about Thanksgiving. So the theme is Thanksgiving, even though it's been over for a long time, and we're supposed to be looking forward to our Christmas shopping and, and our journey through Advent. I know it's over. You don't have to tell me after the service why are we celebrate Thanksgiving when it's over. So I thought it'd be funny this morning. And I know that it's a kind of a stretch for me because it's not in my DNA, but I'm feeling pretty good about myself pretty full, and after all these years of listening to Rebecca and Megan and now Forrest, well, here I go. How are a turkey, donkey, and monkey alike? They all have keys. What's the best dance to do on Thanksgiving? The turkey trot. Somebody's been at Siesta Key for a while. Who is not hungry at Thanksgiving? Because it's already been stuffed. Why can't you take a turkey to church? They use foul language. Now, Karen's been urging me to take improvisation lessons at the comedy club So there'll be much more for you to endure later on. But it's been said, giving thanks makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. One of my disciplines has been to uh, write a gratitude journal. So every day I express thanks for something so no, I, no one's supposed to actually read this until I die, uh, but here are a few of my insights. I'm grateful for the depth of my friendships and how they enrich my lives. I'm grateful for Allison and for her passion for children and for Lee and his steady, faithful presence. I'm thankful that my first ever attempt at latte did not suck. I'm grateful for a beautiful sunset at Turtle Beach and for accomplishing my chores. I'm grateful for my adventure in serving at Pine Shores. I did get my dream job. I'm grateful for grilled oysters and a relaxing evening out for dinner, and Lindsay paid for it. (laughs) I'm grateful for the people of Pine Shores who gather for worship and experience community. Every day, we can choose to be grateful about something. It brings a sense of peace for today and creates a vision for us for tomorrow. Henry Nowen, the wrote these words, increasing prosperity has not made people more friendly toward one another. They're they're better off, but that newfound wealth has not resulted in a sense of community. And I get the impression that people are more preoccupied with themselves than when they didn't possess so much. There was less opportunity to relax, to get together informally, to enjoy the little things of life. Success has isolated a lot of people and made them lonely because the higher you get up on the ladder of prosperity, the harder it becomes to gather 
to come together, to sing together, to pray together, to celebrate together in the spirit of thanksgiving. God calls us to more than one day in the year to give thanks. God invites us to spend our lives expressing gratitude for all the goodness that surrounds us. God invites us to live lives of thanksgiving for all that goodness that fills us. So I started with the words from Paul's prayer, I do not cease to give thanks for you, and continued with the, with the wisdom from the literature in the Psalms, let them thank God for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry, he fills with good things. The Bible is full of encouragement to be thankful to God. The word thank, thanks, thankful, thankfulness occurs hundreds of times and is spread throughout the Old and New Testament. And many of the rich biblical characters that we read about express thankfulness so we can see it. Benedine Monk David Reinald Rast the author of a book on thankfulness, writes, one who says thank you to another really says we belong together. Thankfulness, giving thanks, is a big deal in the Bible. The root word in the the Hebrew, yadad, it means to throw out a hand, to literally stretch your hand out and, and Hebrew scripture, thankfulness, centers around remembering what God has done for the people of Israel. The deeds to which God has included are the gifts of the law, the the gift of delivering people out of slavery, the generosity of giving people a land, and God's provision for a healthy harvest. And the writers of the Psalms say, thank God for those big events. But as you read the Psalms, you also realize that The authors also give God thanks for meeting the simplest of their needs. Every day, we get to share gratitude if we pay attention. And in the Greek, the same is understood as the word gratitude. But the caveat here is that it's just not a passive gratitude. It is an active expression of gratitude. Thankfulness, gratitude, focus on what God has done and what God is doing. So what I would say is that being thankful is life-affirming, it's hope-building, it's relationship-enhancing, it's community-strengthening, and it is justice-seeking. It generates a, a, a positive life energy that helps make good things happen. Because when you give thanks, you, you do three things. It increases your own faith. And I want you to think about this. It increases your own faith. It increases the value of the other person. And it creates possibilities for more good in the world. And that's why I believe that we can't let go of the significance of thanksgiving. And even when our culture says, get over it and move on, and why are you focusing on thanksgiving when it's been over? Giving thanks is a big deal. Being a thankful people, we demonstrate that we don't take the gifts for granted. Hmm. Being thankful means that we don't take our gifts for granted. It bears witness to the giver of the gifts. God asks us to give thanks so that we might experience the blessing that gratitude brings. And what does gratitude bring? It brings others into our sights. It brings God back into our sight. It's been written that gratitude has the power to energize. And in the face of brokenness, gratitude has the power to heal. 
In the face of despair, gratitude has the power to bring hope. So people who regularly practice giving thanks takes time to notice and reflect upon the things that they are thankful for because, and because of that, because of that reflection and pondering, they are more positive, they are more alive, they sleep better, they show more kindness and compassion, have a stronger immune system, giving thanks, being a thankful people is good for your health. And it's not just reserved for the fourth Thursday in November. Giving thanks is life-giving. So I read a story. I got time. You're not going anywhere. I read a story that, uh, that you might have heard about a shopper at a local mall uh, felt a need for a coffee break. Not that I know what shopping in a mall feels like. And she bought herself a coffee and uh, some cookies and put them in her shopping bag and she found a place among the crowded tables and then took off the lid of her coffee and out the little, I guess they got coupon books or something there. She started reading. And after a minute or so, she reached out and took a cookie. And as she did that, the man seated across the table reached out and took one too. So this started to bother her, and, but she didn't say anything, of course. You know, it's gracious. A few minutes later, she took another cookie out, and once again, the man did so too. Now, she was getting a little more than hot under the collar, but still she didn't say anything. And after a couple more sips of coffee, she once again took another cookie, and so did the man, and this really got her upset, especially since now there was only one cookie left. Apparently, the man also realized that there was only one cookie left. And before she could say anything, he took that cookie, the last one, he broke it in half and offered it to her, and then proceeded to eat the other half himself and smiled and walked away. She was mad. The guy ruined her coffee break and her shopping spirit. And she was thinking through about how she was going to tell this story around the table with her family. She took her coupon, opened her shopping bag, and discovered her own unopened bag of cookies. <laughs> so in our culture, that is indeed, by historical standards, a hugely affluent culture. We find ourselves often complaining without taking time to understand because of the very quality of our lives is based on, the very quality of our lives is based on how thankful you are. Period. Write it down, Bruce said it, believe it. The very quality of our lives depends on how thankful you are. It is one attitude that determines whether life will unfold into a place of blessedness. So I just think that Thanksgiving is a good time to refresh ourselves, to discern the blessings in our midst, no matter what's going on. And there's some, there's some difficult stuff going on in our lives. We know that. We know there's sickness, and we know there's separation, and we know there's unhealthy behavior. We know there's some, some difficult things going on, but no matter what's going on, we are invited to discern the blessings. So I just want to invite you, encourage you to begin nurturing habits of thankfulness for today. And, and even when we are saturated by our culture that tells us over and over and over and over and over and over again we don't have enough. When advertisements blare at us continually telling us that we need more things, more recreation, more things, more and more and more is the message that we encounter day after day. 
and particularly as we turn our attention to the frenzy of Christmas, making our list, checking it twice, those improvisational lessons are ranked number third on my list, even in the midst of all that cultural pressure to notice what we don't have, I say, notice what you do have and who is in your life. Because God is generous and has given us so much. My invitation is to invite you, encourage you to be intentional about noticing the God's God's gift for you as a family, as a person, and for us as a community. Because if we choose to notice God's abundant blessings and remember that our relationship with God has greater value than all the stuff. So it's really a challenge to live with thanksgiving during each day and making an effort to write in your journal what you see and what you smell and what you taste and what you touch and who is in your life. And it's a great habit. Have you ever seen a flower painted by Georgia uh, O'Keeffe? She uh, was a, she painted the insides of petunias and other, other common garden flowers. And she began to paint those flowers when she moved to New York City after spending numerous years in Texas and New Mexico. So she believed that beauty can be found anywhere we look for it. And she looked at the interior of flowers growing on dirty pavements in New York City and found something to be thankful for. Friends, God wants us to notice the beautiful flowers on the dirty pavements. God wants us to have these, this such a depth of grateful hearts because God knows that when we notice the gifts that fill our lives, when we notice those gifts, gratitude, thankfulness always follows. And when we give thanks, our lives become richer and more vibrant, and God's goodness gets shared in the world. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and let each day be filled with thanks.